candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But ah, my foes, and oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. I'm terrible at pimping my stuff, so I thought dressing like a pimp might make it a little bit easier. I have blogs, blogs where you can read stuff and see things and interact with me. My main one is postmortemstudios.wordpress.com. My writing one and sort of diary blog is over at talesofgrim.wordpress.com. Hope to see you there. The Queen is being interred today, which will at least bring an end to the most overtly disruptive enforced respect that has been going on. It's been a weird one. When Princess Diana died, I was equally unmoved, but the grief and the hurt of my fellow Brits at least seemed somewhat genuine, coming from the ground up for a woman who had been wronged by a powerful political dynasty, who had been hard done by, and who had her own sort of celebrity, and who seemed to have some sort of genuine touch when it came to to interacting with the people. The grief for Liz seems artificial, top-down, enforced. That isn't to say that there's some genuine grief for the loss of the woman, which did have a massive impact on British society for many decades. But the BBC has become a sort of enforcer of official grief, and the other mainstream channels have followed suit. While I joke that the queue to see the coffin was so long because people were there to check that she was really dead. It's a trick. Get an axe. There is something ghoulish and ritualistic about the whole thing. And then we get to the whole protest thing. I'm a Republican. That's a small r before any Americans get excited. That means I don't want a king or queen. I see it as an anachronism, um, an insult to our freedom as people. I come from a line of Republicans. And while you may think of Britain as a forelock-tugging nation of bootlickers, we have a long history of radical republicanism and democratization. Don't forget, we beheaded a king and had a republic well before the French did. Besides Agincourt and Crecy, that's a good thing to rub the French's faces in. We also have a strong tradition of liberalism and human rights, despite the current shower of wankers in charge. The right to protest used to be important, and it meant something, because it could genuinely affect change. Not so much anymore. I reckon the last time protest or riots made any real difference to anything was the poll tax riots in the early 90s. So, given those traditions, the Republican history and the right to protest, what the hell is going on with Republican protesters around the death of the Queen? People making their protest, and it hasn't been particularly disruptive, they have been assaulted by members of the general public. People holding up blank sheets of paper have been cautioned by the police. Older versions of laws on public order offences have been invoked. A railway workers' strike has been cancelled that was scheduled for today. People have been arrested and unarrested for trying to protest. The more vicious end of the right-wing press has been actively hunting dissenting voices, and the BBC, rendered toothless by funding threats from our out-and-out right-wing government, has barely even mentioned the protests, has cut booing that occurred in the regions out of broadcasts, and hasn't come to even the mildest defence of people's rights. Now apparently isn't the time to do it. Why? That top-down deference and enforcement, it's no 
different really to being cancelled on Twitter for saying something un-PC, only this involves state power and social censure by similar self-appointed enforcers of propriety and decency who would normally protest that sort of thing. It's a weird combination of state thuggery, social censure, and Britain's obsession with that politeness and propriety. Even some public relations slip in there. If the strike had gone ahead, arguably when it would have been most effective of all, the strikers would have lost the public sympathy. The police are arresting people not because they're necessarily really breaking the law, but just to get them out of the way so that things can carry on unmolested, even unarresting them after the moment has passed. It's not about the law. It's about keeping that air of propriety and politeness. The law can figure it out later. Some people might possibly be compensated for what has happened to them during all this. But better that than allow things to be disrupted by shouting or signs. Whether our right to protest will continue to be curtailed remains to be seen, with Pretty Patel out and a new, even more right-wing Home Secretary in the form of Braverman coming in. The old plan to curtail those rights may disappear, or, more likely, it may be made even worse. It's hard for me to get too worked up about that because protest hasn't worked since the 90s, but still, it feels like a curtailment of our rights. I would argue that this absolutely is the right time to protest. This is not just a private funeral for someone's grandmother, and God knows we had enough of those during during COVID, and the government didn't seem to care very much about people's grief then. The eyes of the nation and world are on this event, and this is the head of the church and the titular head of the nation passing the mantle from one generation to the next. It is a political act. The censure of protest, however pointless that protest has become for enacting change, is a political act as well. It is repressive. It is something we would mock. We have mocked when it occurs in other nations, or that we would regard with horror. Mute politeness and stoicism in the face of this sort of thing Down with this sort of thing! Careful now. Down with this sort of thing! may well be perceived as British, but it is also very, very British to protest, to revolt, to behead kings, and to mock big events, to deflate them and cope with them. Only a third of us, at most, perhaps, favour a republic, but we have our rights, same as anyone else, and that should be celebrated and enshrined as well. Zhang There's a magical time on the cusp of true adolescence where you're no longer quite a child and not yet an adult. A time where the confidence of the teenager and the wonder of the child combine in a surge of optimism, hope and imagination to make some of the most important moments of our lives. There's a rich vein of films that tap into this time. These are the films where the kids save the world, find something fantastical or solve a problem that the adults can't or wouldn't even believe existed. Some of these are fantastical, some are not. Some are a loving homage to the older versions of the same sorts of stories. If you like The Goonies, Super 8, The Monster Squad, or Explorers, this is a game for you and your kids. Available at post-mort.com and drive through RPG. Turn up the bass, turn up the treble, Texas Rockabilly.